prepare journal entries to account for the following transactions for Sherman Systems. Letter A purchased 4,000 shares of its own common stock at $20 per share. When a company reacquires its own stock from the open market and holds it temporarily, it's referred to as treasury stock. The journal entry to record the purchase of the 4,000 shares is a debit to the contra equity account treasury stock 4,000 shares multiplied by the $20 cost per share, $80,000, and a credit to cash. This is the cost method. The par value of the shares is not considered when accounting for treasury stock. Letter B sold 1,000 treasury shares on November 1st for $21 cash per share. The company reissues the shares, debiting cash, 1,000 shares multiplied by $21 per share, $21,000. We credit treasury stock always at the original cost per share. 1,000 shares multiplied by $20 per share is $20,000. The difference of $1 per share is not an income statement gain. Instead, we credit the equity account paid in capital treasury stock for the difference $1,000. Letter C sold all remaining treasury shares on November 25th for $18 cash per share. Debit cash for the amount received, 3,000 shares at $18 per share, $54,000. Credit the Treasury stock account for the cost of the 3,000 shares, $20 per share, $60,000, and now we have a $6,000 difference to absorb. Since the assets are only increasing by $54,000, total equity can only increase by the same $54,000. Since we're crediting Treasury stock for $60,000, we need to debit other equity accounts for a total of $6,000. The paid-in capital Treasury stock account can be debited, but it can never have an ending debit balance. We debit the paid-in capital Treasury stock account for its available balance. There was no balance at the beginning of the year, and we credited the account for $1,000 on November 1st. The paid-in capital treasury stock account can absorb $1,000 of the $6,000 decrease to equity. The remaining $5,000 is debited to retained earnings and is presumed to be a dividend.